In this video you will learn most common TypeScript mistakes that people are doing in their projects, so let's check if you have them in yours. And the main problem that I see is that people are jumping from JavaScript directly to TypeScript project without getting any TypeScript knowledge. They see that the code is similar and they think that they can just start writing TypeScript without learning anything. And the problem is that they don't leverage TypeScript and TypeScript doesn't help them, they simply fight against TypeScript. And in order to win, they are using some nasty things. And the first thing that people are typically doing, they are disabling the strictness inside tsconfig, which actually means inside the project we have tsconfig with the whole configuration of TypeScript. And there is this option strict true, which enables lots of different checks and it combines multiple strict rules. You should never set strict to false, because obviously it makes your TypeScript less strict. And less strict TypeScript means that you are getting less errors in compiling time and more errors in runtime later. This is not a safe approach. So realistically, you never want to disable any rules of TypeScript inside tsconfig, because it won't make your code safer. The second thing that all people are doing, because they don't know TypeScript enough and they don't know how to fix TypeScript correctly, they simply use any operator. So instead of creating some interface user with fields like id string and name string and using it here to type our new user correctly and get some validation that we are missing following properties like you typically need to do with TypeScript, they simply write here any, they don't create any interface at all and they will never get errors. And they think that this is good because they can just continue to write their TypeScript as JavaScript without any problems, but obviously all these errors will come to the runtime. Which essentially means if you have a project where you have any keyword more than like 20 times, this is already not a safe project. You need to use any in extremely rare cases. And we have something else which is much better than any. And this thing which is much better than any is called unknown. And this is exactly one more point which people are not using enough inside TypeScript. So let's say that we have some function get foo and we're getting something as an argument. And people typically will write here any because it can be anything. But the main problem when you are writing any and you are trying to access something, like for example console log something dot at one, you won't get any validation at all. TypeScript is simply disabled. We don't really know that this is a string and if you don't know at we can use only on the string. So realistically, if you don't know what you are getting in your function, you should not use any data type. You must use unknown because it is really unknown for you. And as you can see, it looks extremely different because here we are getting an error. Something is of type unknown, which actually means we can't really use add operator because something is unknown. The main difference is with any, you don't have any errors, with unknown you are getting them. You really need to narrow your type inside this function in order to apply some parameter. And this is the next point which people are not doing, they don't have any clue what is type narrowing or how to do it correctly. And essentially type narrowing is what we are using with unknown for example to narrow our type. In this case here our type is unknown and we don't really know what we are getting inside. What we can do here we can check the type. We can write type of something equals string. So here we are sure okay this is string and let's now move this console log inside our if. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Now let's jump back into the video. As you can see, after we wrote this if, our something is not unknown, it is of type string. And now here we are getting that add is a function that we can call on this string. The main point is that with this if and type of, we narrowed our type from unknown to a string. This is an extremely useful pattern because you are getting unknown and then you narrow your checks and you can apply different functions without really converting your data type to something else. Which actually brings me to another problem that people are overusing and 
and this is a type assertion operator or as. Instead of this code here with type of, we can fix it differently in a bad way. We can say here that we have a variable string and here we're writing something as string. Now here instead of something we can write here string and we don't have any errors. And yes, TypeScript here is saying, okay, on our string, which is a string, we have a function add, this is totally fine. But realistically, the usage of type assertion is extremely similar to the usage of any operator. We are using type assertion to assert the type to any other type that we want, which means this is not the type that we are getting inside our application, this is not the type that TypeScript understood correctly, this is just some random type that we are using. In this case here, we are simply saying, okay, this is a string. I can write here number, boolean, whatever, but this is not true. We don't really know what we are getting. This code will break in runtime if we are getting here not a string, but we are getting here a number, for example, or an array. This code is not safe, even when we don't have any errors from TypeScript compiler. So in the same way like with any, you need to use type assertion operator as rarely as possible. Another important moment is that people are not typing everything enough. Sometimes TypeScript can get the correct data type on its own, but it doesn't mean that it is always correct, which actually means if we are writing a data type on our own, we are sure that this is exactly what we want. If TypeScript is guessing our type, it can be that later when we are changing the code, the data type will also change. For example, even in this example with getFoo, this function is returning void. And TypeScript understood it because we didn't return anything here, but realistically the good code would be to write here void operator. Because in this case here we can't return 1, it will be an error. As you can see we are getting, type number is not assignable to type void. Which actually means if we are not writing here void, we won't get any error from TypeScript whatsoever. Because in this case TypeScript C, okay, this function returns for us a number. But this is not really what we want, we really want a function which does not return anything. This is why it makes a lot of sense to type every single variable to make sure that the data type is correct inside. The next important moment is that people are getting TypeScript errors and they don't understand how to fix them or they don't understand errors at all. This is why they are using type assertion any just to fix this problem, which actually means they simply need to learn TypeScript more and try to understand its errors more. For example, in this case here when we are returning 1 and we are getting a TypeScript error, type number is not assignable to type void, you must really understand what it means. You must know what is the type number, what is the type void and why you are getting this error here. For example, we know, okay, void means that we are not returning anything, but this function is returning here 1 in this line because 1 is a number. Obviously this is the problem, this is why we can remove this code, which essentially means you must take your time, especially if you are a beginner, and fix your TypeScript error correctly. Another important point that people are missing is that TypeScript is a static analyzer of your code, it doesn't really understand the whole project or what values you have inside your project. What I mean by that? Just imagine that you have a function getData and you are providing inside a parameter data which is of type string and it returns void. Now here somewhere in your application you have a data property which can be a string or undefined. But it might really happen that it is undefined and now you are trying to use getData function and you are providing data inside. And you are getting this error that argument of type undefined is not assignable to parameter of type string. And you are thinking, okay, but my data in my application with these values that I have now is really not undefined, it is really a string. But your data type here is clearly saying that it is string or undefined. And essentially you must understand that TypeScript does not care what values you have inside your application. And this is especially true with some values which are coming from the outside, like maybe from the DOM. All these values for TypeScript can be undefined, and even if you have that specific DOM node on the screen, TypeScript doesn't know anything about it. This is exactly the case here. 
If we are providing inside some data which might be undefined, then TypeScript will throw an error, because we are trying to provide an undefined data type inside the function where we must provide only a string, which actually means you must either check outside for this data type or tell TypeScript that your function can also get an undefined, even if you think that in your application it is not true and it will never happen. Another problem that I see a lot is that people are using optional too much. For example, they are creating an interface user and they make almost all fields optional. Like for example, id is a string, then our name here is optional and it is a string, then we have age, it is also optional and it is a number, and then is the active property is also optional and it is boolean. This code is completely valid, but this is a bad code. Why is that? Because we have too many optional properties. Essentially, this interface is super similar to any, because everything here can be undefined. And you are not really getting a lot from such interface inside TypeScript, because your validation is really lacking. You have lots of users that might have just an ID and nothing else, and you will think that this is enough. But then you are trying to use your user in some function and it lacks all these other properties, which essentially means I highly recommend you to always mark all your properties as required, which is by default so, and rarely use optional. Another problem that I see people are doing, they are using type union instead of enum. Let's have a look. For example, here you can create a data type, state, which can be either active or completed or rejected. This is just a normal data type. You can create then variables like state and you can say that state is of type state and here you are applying active. This is totally fine and it is working. The main problem with such code that almost always later you want to do some checks. Like for example, if our state equals active, then I want to make my console log. For example, we are active. The main problem is that because you used type, it does not exist inside JavaScript, it only exists inside TypeScript, which actually means it is completely stripped out of JavaScript code. We can't really use it inside JavaScript. This is why we can't really use this state as a data type, for example, for this active property. But we can write this code differently by using enum. We can create here an enum state, and here we will have an active field, the value here will be active, then we have here a completed field with value completed, and we have rejected field with rejected. So what this allows us to do is not only use a state as a data type, but also as a value. For example, here we are getting an error, type active is not assignable to type state, and this is completely valid, because we can't assign here strings anymore. But we can say here state.active. And this is really nice because in this case, we don't use just random strings across our application, we're using an enum. And in exactly the same way here inside our if, we can write if our state equals state.active, then we're writing our console log. So inside if and inside assignment, we're using our state as a value, but here we're using it as a data type, which is extremely versatile. One more common TypeScript mistake that people are doing, they're using exclamation mark at all. And essentially here I again have this getData function, and I have data on the outside which is of type string or null. But the main point is that here TypeScript screams that our data of type undefined is not assignable to string. And there is a quick fix for that, which is extremely dirty. Here we can put an exclamation mark and TypeScript doesn't care about it. Why is that? This exclamation mark means for TypeScript that we are sure that the value is there. Realistically, you can never be sure that the value is there, and this is an extremely bad code. This is on a level of type assertion and any. Because with this code, TypeScript does not do any checks, TypeScript believes a programmer, and this is a bad thing. So realistically, here we want much better solution. We want to check if our data is there. So if we have our data, only then we want to call getData function. In this case, TypeScript does not scream at all, because it understands that in this case our data is never undefined, because we did this check. 
And another possible fix of this code would be to use or operator. We can write here that we are providing inside either data or an empty string. This is totally fine, because if our data is undefined, then we will fall back to an empty string and provide it inside our data, and this is also completely valid for the TypeScript. So write me down in the comments below how many points from what I mentioned you have inside your project. And if you want to improve your TypeScript knowledge even better, and maybe even prepare for TypeScript interview, make sure to check this video also.